Wow, holy shit. Oh, fuck you, Oklahoma. <laughs> no matter what kind of shitty day you're having, no matter fucking, you know, what ha you can come out here on your bike and fucking hit the twisties and see the ocean and see the mountains and you can't be upset. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if you can really truly be upset driving around like this if at least you know if you have a if you lived in Oklahoma most of your life like I have I mean I cannot be upset when I see this stuff this is a blast nobody comes up here look at this nobody I passed two cars other than that I have not seen a single bike and look at this shit this is a great road that's why I never stick to the beaten path very much. I, I'm not a where I don't go where everybody goes. That, that's just not me. I find cool shit on my own like this. Groups of people, uh, Sigmund Freud, you know, I think probably first and certainly best was the best, the earliest and best explanation of group behavior, human groups of human behavior. Uh, people tend to become dependent children, as he so strikingly observed. People become depending ch dependent children when they're in groups. Groups generally have a leader. And so people look up to this person and they become dependent children again. They, that, that infantile mindset sets in and they just obey the voice of their parents without really thinking. You know, the, the rational part of some people's mind just they, they can it just gets shut off kind of depending you know everybody's different but and so that's why groups of people tend to be so stupid and do and people will do individuals will do sh things that they wouldn't normally ever do ever but because they're in a group and in a dependent mindset No, they just do it and it's pretty scary a uh, pretty scary little mind hack of humans that I think everybody should be aware of and take care to avoid my rational part of my brain I take care to never shut off if I'm in a group it's more active I'm more conscious and aware of what we're doing uh, it took it took practice to do that you know you get and certain groups and your emotions, you know, get attached to beliefs and reason is probably, the ability to reason and freedom of thought are probably the biggest assets to us human beings. If we can't do either one of those things, I, you might be able to argue that, you know, someone was not really fully human, or at least a part of their humanity was missing. The reason is very important. Reason is necessary to you to grow, to advance. Uh, you have to be able to decide what, if something is better or worse. So in order to advance, reason is absolutely necessary. You cannot, you cannot expand your knowledge or expand anything without the use of reason. And this is, this is one of the problems I have about with religion, uh, especially Christianity and Islam, because that's what they, they teach the opposite. They tell you that to replace reason with faith, and faith by definition is belief in something on bad or insufficient evidence uh, which in my opinion is not a good thing to do you should not do that so if someone says to you you know the Quran is perfectly historically accurate and you have faith and you want and you have faith and you're in a group mindset you might be like yeah that's that sounds reasonable you know I see a couple things in there that sound familiar uh, probably is pretty historically accurate when it's not at all Same thing with the Bible, not historically accurate at all. I'm sorry, it's not. Any historically literate person knows that. Sometimes, sometimes reason can be boring. But 
your positions that are based on reason will have the advantage of being, like I said, demonstrable and closer to true, if not fully true. Wow, fuck Mulholland, this is way better. Uh, you know, in George Orwell's book, 1984, which, if you haven't read it yet, do it soon. Uh, read it soon. It's all about what it's like to live in one of humanity's greatest enemies, which is the one-party totalitarian state. The North Korean totalitarian state was established in the same year that 1984 was published. And it's almost like someone gave Kim Jong-il a copy of 1984 and said, Hey, do you think we could make this work? <laughs> North Korea is one of the few places left on Earth where you can be convicted and punished for thought crime. You are getting in trouble for what you think. Now, if that's not evil, let that sink in. Let that idea sink in. Getting in trouble for having a thought. Now tell me that isn't the pinnacle of wickedness because the way psychology is studied nowadays people often confuse thoughts with behavior because that's what psychology is people think it's studying the mind but you're really actually studying behavior so that don't confuse thoughts with behavior I'm not saying acting on thoughts am I I'm saying thoughts themselves you can get in trouble for but we don't have the technology to read things like that really yet. We're getting there. Science is working on it, but uh, I don't think North Korean can actually do that. But they will use psychology. But I think it's important, especially now, that everybody read 1984 and be aware of what a one-party state looks like and maybe how a little bit of how it comes about. Because this, the one-party state depends on groupthink too, what I was talking about earlier. It depends on you becoming dependent and, and looking up to Big Brother and not really thinking about anything and just accepting what's said. I, I, I feel like it's slowly happening to our country and it's very alarming because people don't arm themselves with knowledge. A lot of people don't arm themselves with knowledge in the country, even though it's easier to do than ever before. They don't value it. People do not value knowing and understanding things, and in fact, if you express value, value and understanding towards knowledge, a lot of times you'll get, you'll be ostracized from certain groups. What are you waving for? Just fucking chill. So a lot of the national news stations are the equivalent of two minutes hate. Uh, you know, first it's the Taliban, then it's ISIS, then it's Ebola, then it's this, then it's that. There's always a new war or enemy or virus or bad thing going on and it's just a never-ending distraction and circus for everybody's minds and you know minds that could have been great had the possibility to maybe be great get placed into these constant fear-ruled worrisome tombs and just get stuck they get mentally stuck in the mud and it's really sad uh, a lot of what is said is, is not true, but in an overt kind of way. It's not directly untrue, but the stories are just twisted, and you never really... You know, it's not true, but you don't know what the lie is that you consumed. You know, there's, there's really no way to verify for yourself what's going on other than reading other people's opinions online or other news stations. So if they're reporting on a topic on the other country, the average person can't go to that country and see what's actually going on. So they just, again, accept it and, you know, fail to use reason sufficiently and they just get stuck in it pisses me off. That's why I don't watch TV. It, it's, it's poison to the mind. 
I used to like Discovery Channel, but that's even bullshit now. Every show, every damn show on the Discovery Channel is bullshit. It's that fucking shark one, the mega shark or whatever bullshit. They get, they get actors on here, no formal education, and put big white letters at the bottom of the screen, Dr. So-and-so is a marine biologist, and you look it up and they're an actor. They, they maybe went to college for a year at most. But they parade them out like they're the actual doctors and scientists and people believe it. As Thomas Paine once famously wrote, arguing with someone who has renounced the use of reason is like administering medicine to the dead. And I will end with that.